All right, now we'll continue our discussion about polar coordinates and uh, graphing polar curves by looking at polar roses. Um, a rose is what it kind of sounds like. Um, it's a graph that ends up looking like a flower. They're always symmetrical and they have a certain number of petals or leaves of a flower, if you will. They always look up uh, like, and they're of the form R equals A cosine or sine N times theta. And the number N, if it's even, you have twice as many petals. And if it's odd, you have N petals. So we use a lot of the same method that we've talked about before when we're graphing these, but we, we take into account the fact that, hey, we know something. We can figure out, hey, we, we have the number of petals almost given to us, so we should take into account that as we're doing it. Um, if you look at our OpenStax text, when they, after we test for symmetries, creating a good table like we have been doing, they really emphasize just the zeros and the maximum values or like the lengths of the leaves, if you will. But I like to uh, find a few intermediate points as well to establish clear patterns that we can really tell what's going on. Once you've done that, the process is really the same as we have been doing. So as an example, um, suggested increments as you're finding the points to graph. Uh, these followings really are suggestions. You should explore this on your own and, and adjust accordingly as, as you as your exploration of the concept progresses. In our example, we'll see the first one, I only do a very few number of points, and the second one, I do a whole lot. And uh, in the second one, I don't even use the convention that I've written down here, but it's just a good kind of starting place for you. All right, so our first example, we'll take a look at r equals 2 cosine of 2 theta. And here, what we have is we have n is equal to 2, which is an even number. And that tells us that we're going to have 2n, which is equal to 2 times, and maybe I should use a color here. So this is the 2, the blue 2 that I'm referring to. 2 times, whoops, sorry, that should say 2 there. 2 times 2 tells us that we're going to have a total of four petals or leaves of our flower. It's not necessarily roses. Roses is just the name that they're referred to. They're more like a child would draw a flower, or honestly, I draw a flower. OK, what else do we know about this? Um, well, we know something. I know that cosine of 2 theta is always between 1 or negative 1. So if you multiply 2, whoops, sorry about that. If you multiply 2 on the outside of that, 2 times cosine of whatever, it doesn't matter what's inside, will be less than or equal to 2 or less than or equal to negative 2. So from here, we can determine that 2 is the length of our petals. All right, so now that we've kind of thought about that, we say, hey, our petals are gonna be of length two and we know that there are going to be four of them. We're gonna follow the same process that we have so far. And so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna test for symmetries. First one, as usual, we'll test for the polar axis or the x-axis, if you will, polar axis symmetry. And as we've seen, the way to test for that is we're going to replace theta with negative theta and see what happens. R is equal to 2 cosine of twice. Whoops, we're replacing theta with negative theta, so that'll be twice times negative theta. That'll give us r is equal to 2 cosine of negative 2 theta, but we know that cosine is even. And so if we have cosine of negative whatever, it's the same thing as cosine of positive whatever as its input. So we can make this change here and say that this is the same thing as r is equal to twice cosine of positive 2 theta. And this is what we started with. This is our original. And this, so this tells us that we have symmetry with respect to our, our WT with respect to the polar axis. So we have vertical symmetry, if you will, around that uh, polar axis, or the positive x axis. The next type of symmetry we always test for is we test for the vertical line symmetry. Theta is equal to pi over 2. And to do that, we are going to use the more complicated test here. Um, we're going to use replacing theta with 
pi minus theta, and we'll use that product to, or sum to product formula. So r is equal to twice cosine of two times replacing the entire quantity of theta with pi minus theta. That's going to give us, um, well, I'm going to brush all that sum to product formula because we've seen it before, sum to product formula under the rug for cosine. And if we math this out, we will get r is equal to two cosine of two theta. And that's the same thing we started with. So this says that we have symmetry with respect to the theta equals pi over two line, that vertical line, if you will. Now we know that if you have the last symmetry type that we test for is pole, I'm sorry, not polar, I always write that wrong. We have polar axis. The next symmetry we test for is the pole, whether you're symmetrical about the pole. But we know that if you have both of the other types of, of symmetry, polar axis, and you have the theta equals pi over two line symmetry, then by default, you have pole symmetry as well. So it has all, all three types of symmetry. And so now we step back and say, OK, we've tested for symmetries. Now we have to think about what would make a good set of points. So we'll generate a so-called good r comma theta table. Now, if we have all the symmetries, both vertical and horizontal, really all we kind of could need is, is one, one quarter of our, uh, our entire plane. We could just look at the first quadrant there. And so that goes from theta to pi over two. So we'll generate a quick table. We'll take theta, we'll take, and so we're plugging in theta. And sometimes when I'm doing these, I like to make theta and then twice theta, because it helps me kind of do the scratch work and math a little bit. And then we get r is equal to two cosine of two theta. And then for our point, it will be r comma theta. And as you're doing this, it's important to remember that theta is respect to the, with respect to the angle you plug in, not what twice theta becomes. So we'll use 0 as our first angle. And we get twice times 0 is still 0. r is equal to 2 cosine of 0. Well, that just gives us 2 times 1, which is 2. So this gives us radius of 2 um, angle of 0. And we'll make our first point um, be black. Why not? And then I don't know, we'll do blue here. So I'm just going to work through the key angles for our, my first uh, 0 to pi over 2, quadrant 1, if you will. And we'll just see what happens. So when you plug in pi over 6, 2 times pi over 6 gives you pi over 3. And so r is equal to 2 cosine of pi over 3. And you could do the scratch work that I'm doing here by just plugging in 2 times uh, pi over 6 here and simplifying that. But I'm just kind of doing things in a funny way. Um, this is going to give us 2 times 1 half, which is equal to 1. So we get for our second point, our blue point, the angle input, I'm sorry, the radius is 1, the distance we travel. And the input angle, the original input angle is pi over 6, not pi over 3, mind you. Um, red, pi over 4, a little bit faster. Twice times pi over 4 becomes pi over 2. And so you get r equals cosine of pi over 2, which is 2 times 0, which is 0. And so you get a radius of 0 for a given input of pi over 4. That'll be our red point. Orange, pi over 3. Twice times pi over 3 makes this 2 pi over 3. R is equal to cosine, twice cosine. It looks like I left a 2 out up there. Sorry about that. Twice cosine of twice pi over 3. And that gives us 2 times negative 1 half, which gives us negative 1. So we have, for this point, we have a radius of negative 1 in the pi over 3 direction. And then for last or not least, we'll get to 90 degrees, pi over 2, which times 2 just gives us pi. r is equal to twice cosine of pi gives us 2 times negative 1 equals negative 2. So for our final green point here, we will have negative 2 radius for input pi over 2. All right, so we got a bunch of points, and that's great. And now we know that we have both vertical and horizontal symmetry. And so 
now it's time for step three, or, or I'm sorry, I don't even know what numbers I've got here, but we'll, we'll go with and call it three. We'll just say what it is, right? The next step is to plot points. And we're going to account for symmetry as we're doing so. And so as usual, we'll draw ourselves a quick little picture. I know that the largest, the length of the petals is gonna be two. So I'll draw a circle at radius length one and a circle at radius length two. And then I'll draw a few kind of guidelines here. And since we did pi over four, pi over three, pi over six, and pi over two, not in that order, we'll go ahead and use that. All right, so first things first, we'll plot our first point, which was uh, two comma zero. So the angle was zero and the radius was two. So that puts us right out here on the polar axis, if you will. The next point we had was at pi over six, the distance is one, one comma pi over six. I could write these one comma pi over six. I think that was helpful when we were doing that before. So we'll keep doing that. Um, this is two comma zero. And then the next point was zero comma pi over four. So we're gonna travel a distance zero in the pi over four direction. And then next point we had four pi over three. So for pi over three, we had negative. So you know what, let's extend all these down. And so for pi over three, we had negative one, the direction of negative one. So pi over three, pi over three, comma negative one, not in that order. So direction pi over three, distance negative one, we're down here. And last but not least, we had negative two comma pi over two. And so for pi over two direction, we travel negative two and we end up down here. So now, again, think of this as a particle that's traveling through time. And so we start at our starting place and, and we travel in the direction that it, it goes. Now this is one method for graphing these and I'll take a look at the other one. We kind of explore the graph a little bit, but there's a small amount of hand waving going on here, but let's, uh, let's now let's account for symmetries. Well, we, we know that we have polar axis symmetry. So we have vertical symmetry like this. Um, maybe I should do this with a color. Yeah, well, we'll just, I don't know. No, we won't do it with a color. We have vertical axis symmetry like this. So if you were to rotate this around, you would have this symmetry where quadrant one would become symmetrical in quadrant four. And what's in quadrant three would also show up in quadrant two. Okay, so if we rotate that vertically. Now we also have to account for the fact that we also have pi over uh, two equals theta, the, that vertical line symmetry, in other words, horizontal symmetry. Now, if we rotated everything we have around that vertical pi over two line, that y-axis, if you will, well, the third quadrant would copy into the fourth quadrant and the second quadrant would copy into the first quadrant. And then that, that, leaf, uh, that leaf or that petal that shares uh, straddles um, quadrant one and quadrant four would, would duplicate over here in quadrant two and quadrant three, just like this. And does that fit the number of petals we expected? Sure enough, we expected that we should have four petals. But that, that piece of information that, hey, we have four petals is exceptionally helpful here to only plot that many points. So here we did an example where you tried to use symmetry and we plotted a minimal amount of points. And we, we in a way, we got lucky because I didn't follow my advice of saying, hey, we should really go by a small increment. So for, if I followed this advice, you know, four petals, I should probably go by eighths and take a look at pi over eight and then pi over Oh gosh, two pi over eight is, I don't know. Anyway, you should look at all a lot more than perhaps we did. So let's look at this thing as a graph and talk about an alternate method of doing these problems that I am not gonna present, uh, but is very common. Waiting for this to load here for a second. All right, so you can see there's a prettier version of the thing that we just generated, and I have it plotted in green. And here I have um, the same curve, g of x equals two times two, uh, cosine of two x, um, plotted in green with red dots as just a standard x, y curve. You can use this as thinking about 
x2 here. Sorry, this doesn't work terribly well with my pen, so I'll stop doing that. But you can think of this as x2 as being theta. And then the result, g of x2, is your r equals 2 cosine of 2 theta. You can use that to kind of put together the points. Um, they're going to be in the wrong order because you've got theta as x. And when we're doing polar coordinates, we list theta second and um, r first. But by, by using a tool like this, you can generate those points. And if you notice, this is reverse of the points in polar coordinate form. Um, yeah, all right. So that's a common way to do it too, is to look at one full cycle, even though we only looked at a partial cycle because we were using symmetry. Just look at one full cycle of two cosine of two theta and uh, generate the points like that. All right. So now let's look at a second example. We did one that was even. So now let's have a look at one that's odd. So this one has some similarities to the first one in that it's got a two multiplied out front. So we know that the extreme value is gonna be two, but let, let's just start there and do this right. So here we have n is equal to three, which is an odd number. And so we know we're gonna have n equals three petals. And since I have the two out in front, I know that the length of the petals will be two because uh, everything sine of whatever is going to be one or less than or equal to one. And so the largest length you can get is possibly two. All right, so now we have to take a look at and test for symmetries and do all the same things we were doing before, only with this particular graph. So first thing, as usual, will test for symmetries. And I'm not even going to number these things. I'm just going to label them with the concept. First one we will test for, as always, is the polar axis. And to do that, we will take um, theta and we will replace it with negative theta. And just as a reminder, you know, if you have this point, r comma theta, if you're going to be symmetrical around that polar axis, this point down here is going to be r comma negative theta. So the only thing you need to change is that negative theta. All right, r is equal to 2 sine of 3 times negative theta. That gives us r is equal to 2 sine of negative 3 theta. And now we talked about even, and I wrote out what it was worth, but we know that sine is odd last time. And so sine of negative whatever is equal to negative sine of positive whatever. So here we can take, and we can write this as r is equal to negative 2 sine of positive 3 theta. And so this fails the test. And so we're not going to say that it doesn't have polar, polar axis symmetry, because it can fail the test and not, and not elicit that type of symmetry. But we're just going to say it fails the test. The next thing we'll do is we'll test for theta equals pi over 2, that vertical line symmetry. And here we're going to use the version of the test where you place r comma theta and you replace it with negative r comma negative theta. And from a visual perspective, as we've kind of seen before, um, if you have the point r comma theta, a way to look at the symmetrical point vertically across that y-axis or theta equals pi over two axis, if you will, well, this would be negative theta. And so if you traveled in the direction of negative theta, you would have to go backwards so negative r would get you there. All right, you're placing those values. You have negative r equals 2 sine of 3 times negative theta. And there's that same math we did above. And so because sine is odd and the same math we did above, we'd have negative 2 sine of 3 theta. But that equal to negative r, you can multiply both sides by negative 1. And sure enough, get back to r is equal to 2 sine of 3 theta, the same thing we started with. So yes, we have symmetry with respect to theta equals pi over two, that vertical line. All right, and now last but not least, we will test for pole symmetry. Probably not, but you know, we'll test for it. Real quick, pole symmetry looks like this. If you have r comma theta, you go down here and you say, how do you get there? We have negative r comma theta. You go the same direct, the same angle, but go in the negative direction. And so put a negative in front of the r and make it equal to 2 sine of 3 theta. 
Well, there's no way to turn that into the original function. So nope, test fails. So it's fairly safe to say here that the only type of symmetry we have is about the uh, vertical line. But you know we should always approach that with a grain of salt because it's possible to fail these tests and still elicit that type of symmetry. So since we're, we're operating under this assumption, I think that if we look at all the values from negative pi over two, sorry, I can't get my marker to work down there, negative pi over two to pi over two, whatever we get, sorry about that, whatever we get over here will become duplicated and the same over there. So we really only need to find the right-hand side of our graph. So let's do that. Now we are expecting a total of three leaves, three petals, if you will. Um, and, but instead of going by pi over six steps, I'm gonna go by pi over 12. I'm just gonna get lots and lots of points and see what happens. And so let's see here. All right, so theta r is equal to two sine of three theta, and then r comma theta, my point. Make ourselves a table as we usually do. And so let's just start with, yep, negative pi over two. Um, and if we're going by twelfths, that's negative six pi over two. So negative five pi over 12, negative four pi over 12, negative three pi over 12, negative two pi over 12. And then that would take us to negative pi over 12. You know, I'm not reducing these to emphasize that we are going by pi over 12s, and then we get to zero. Now we continue the pattern and we say we're going to go back in the same direction, pi over 12, 2 pi over 12, 3 pi over 12, and I might just harness, um, well, we'll see. We'll, we'll just start with this. All right, in black, my first point, you get r is equal to 2 sine of 3 times negative pi over two. Well, that is sine of negative three pi over two. Sine is the y coordinate on the unit circle. So negative three pi over two is this direction, shows up there and that's gonna give you positive one. So this is gonna be two times one is equal to two. So we're gonna have radius of two comma negative pi over two. That's our first point. Now we will in blue, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna really brush this math under the rug here, and I'm gonna approximate these with decimals. You plug in um, negative five pi over 12 into our equation, you're going to get the point negative five pi over 12 is gonna be related to a radius of about 1.4. Do that in blue. And in red, um, we're gonna have zero comma negative four pi over 12, which is actually negative pi over three. That might help us plot these later. And then the next one is negative three pi over 12. Oops, that should be a different color, negative three pi over 12. And that is pi over four, if you will, in the negative direction. That is going to be negative 1.4. And we will keep going. Um, negative two pi over 12. That's actually negative pi over six. And that is negative two for the radius when we plug that in. And then pi over 12 itself, negative pi over 12, negative pi over 12, paired with a radius of length negative 1.4. Now we get back to zero. And with zero, you plug in zero and you get zero. All right, now we continue in the positive direction. So for pi over four, or I'm sorry, pi over 12, we get 1.4 comma pi over 12. And up here, I'll use a solid and we'll use a little open dot for that. So now for the next point, we have two pi over 12, which is pi over six. And that has a 
distance, a radius of two, and we'll use an open circle for that, whereas this one would be solid. Keep going, three pi over 12, pi over four, pi over four, and we have 1.4. Whoops, I'm sorry about that. Uh, cancel, let's share screen again. Sorry about that. Where did we leave off? There we go. Uh, I need a one point in front of that because we are at three pi over 12, one point. All right, open that. And I, I know I'm going a little bit off the boat here, and but I want to get these other points in here. So, you know, we're just going to continue listing our points here. The next color would be green, and green would be 5 pi over 12. And we would have a radius of negative 1.4. And then last, that would be solid there. This one's going to be hollow. And then last but not least, maybe. 6 pi over 12 would be positive pi over 2. And that's going to have a radius of negative 2. And that's going to be open purple dot. OK, so we've got all of these colors done. We're starting with black. And we will go ahead and put this all together. We know that we have vertical line symmetry. And we've got lots and lots of points to look at. So let's just see what happens. Once again, we know that the biggest value, the, the length of our leaves, our petals, if you will, is going to be um, is going to be two. So we'll start with a polar uh, polar grid where we have radius distance one, radius distance two here. And we're going by pi over 12. So let's get pi over 12s in there. First thing, we'll put our fourths in there, pi over fours, pi over sixes. Oh boy, this is going to be hard. Uh, although I only need to do it on the the right hand side. So I'm going to stop doing the left hand side as well. Okay, so here are pi over sixes um, increments. And so I'm going to do pi over 12s as dashed lines in between, or try to. Even though it's imperfect, you kind of get the idea, I hope. So these are going by increments of pi over 12, like this pi over 12. So we're starting at the bottom. And we're starting at negative pi over two. So we have negative, we have a radius of two, negative pi over two. Negative pi over two direction, positive two radius puts my point here for the first point. Our next point was negative five pi over 12. Negative five pi over 12 would be here. And that had a radius of 1.4. And so on this dotted line, we'll go 1.4. That's in the neighborhood of one half. That's kind of like that. And now for negative four pi over three or negative pi over three, we had red at zero comma negative pi over three. It looks like from there to there, we're gonna go back to zero. And so just for to get us started, I'm gonna go ahead and connect these two. I started here and as I progress, I would be going in this direction. I'd be traveling up like that. And then for that one, yep, that's pi over three. So. By the time I hit pi over three, I would be right there at zero. Okay, now let's keep going. The next colored point would be orange. And if we have that zero one, this one would be three pi over 12, which is negative pi over four. Maybe I skipped one, I don't know. Maybe so, it's fine. Negative pi over four, um, that is negative 1.4. Wait, what's happening? What is that? negative three pi over 12, which is negative five, negative four would be, yep, neg all right, so yeah. Negative three pi over 12 is negative pi over four, so negative 1.4 comma negative pi over four. So negative pi over four direction, we have to go in the negative direction. So over here, we have this being something to the tune of two pi over 12 is pi over 12. Yeah, okay, 1.4, here we go, something like that. Um, next, we have negative pi over tw 2 pi over 12, negative 2 pi over 12 is negative pi over 6, so negative pi over 6, comma, negative 2. So negative pi over 6, if we extended negative pi over 6, we would have that over there, 
And we would have a distance of negative two there. Uh, yeah, that looks good. And then negative pi over 12. If we extended the negative pi over 12, that would be between here and here. And what would we have? We'd have green, we'd be purple now. So we would have negative pi over 12 comma negative 1.4. All right, so over here, we're something similar to that. And then last but not least, we get back to zero comma zero, which was zero comma zero. So we'd hit that origin point again, or that pole. And so, all right, if we kept going, imagine traveling in the same direction here, we'd keep going. So keep traveling in that direction, keep traveling in that direction, curve around, and keep traveling back there. And hey, I could start to see how we're gonna get three um, leaves out of this. Now, at this point, if we stopped, we probably have enough where we have vertical, um, vertical line symmetry to generate all of them. But since we did it, let's just keep going. Um, let me just make sure I'm matching the colors from the prior page. Sorry about that. Uh, yep. Pi over 12, 1.4. Pi over 12, 1.4, something like this. Oops, that should be an open dot. Going a little bit faster now uh, and not writing these out. That would be pi over 12, come 1.4. All right, uh, pi over 6, comma 2, pi over six comma radius of two, and that's gonna be right here. Um, next we have orange and we have pi over four, pi over four with a radius of 1.4. So that goes something to the tune of that. And then, hang on, uh, yep. Negative, um, 4 pi over 12 would get back to 0. So 4 pi over 12 would be 0, comma, 3 uh, or pi over 3, get back to 0 there. So if we continue where we left off, we would start at the origin, we would travel out and generate another third leaf. And I'd keep going down, keep going down there till we hit the origin. And you can probably guess what's going to happen, but as we progress, pi over three, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with purple and we're gonna go to five pi over 12, this line here, and that's gonna give us negative 1.4. So we better go down, we better extend that through. If we extend that through, we'd be real close there. And we would have negative 1.4 there. And then last but not least, back at the black pen, we would have pi over two and that has a distance of negative two and we would land right here. And so finishing this in, we would finish making our third petal and we'd have our pretty little curve generated like that. All right, let's go to the, oops, for some reason the navigation has stopped. So let's go to the next page and let's take a quick look at this graph. Maybe I need that to be in control. There we go. All right, last but not least, let's have a look at this graph. So turning this folder on, we see that we've got a picture of our graph. And once again, I did the trick where by writing it as an XY formula, it plots the related Cartesian or rectangular coordinates. And I can use that to generate all the point calculations that I needed. Turn that off, get those points out of there. So when you think about it, we generated this thing with one full rotation of negative pi over two to pi over two, and then we use symmetry. We actually had the whole thing already. So it looks like in one uh, so-called period of zero to pi, which if you look here, this red thing, it only plots the graph from zero to pi. So let's watch what happens if we just go ahead and make this. Oops, let's make that dotted and let's make that bigger. Let's make that five. All right, so, and we'll make it, whoops, that's not T. I don't want T, I want five. Good enough. So now let's see what happens. 
when I hit play for t, it's going, it's going to plot in purple as a dotted line this curve r equals two sine of three theta, and it's going to plot it as progressively. So we'll start at the angle of zero, and so at zero zero we are right at the origin and kind of plots around, and you can see that within one from zero to pi, it plots out the entire curve. Just kind of a fun experiment there. All right, so this was an introduction to plotting polar roses. Uh, I hope it was reasonably helpful, and I encourage you to go have a look at it on your own.